there's absolutely no doubt that I really do not like detail groups. They're a shortcut, a quick fix, and nearly always lead you into trouble. If used correctly, however, they can be quite useful. But in the past several years, I can probably count on one hand the amount of people who have been successfully using detail groups. I'll leave you to make the decision. From the startup screen, click on Open, browse to your Chapter 3 folder, and open the file Chapter 3 Editing Tools. From the project browser, scroll down to the plumbing discipline and open up Level 4 Pipes. Here we have a section. Double click and open the section, and then double click to open the pipe detail callout. Here we have a pipe running through a corridor. And in my haste, I've imported a DWG, exploded it so we have some detail lines, and manipulated them to suit my section. So this may well be a valid way of working if we just had this one instance. Now say we have three copies. What am I going to do here? Am I going to copy all these detail lines? Or can I select the detail lines, deselect the pipe, and from my ribbon, click on Create Group. Revit now prompts you to give the group a name. And in the majority of cases, this is where the whole thing falls apart. In my opinion, that is. I could give this a name, Pipe, Hanger, and click on OK. And that now gives me a group, and I can manage its insertion point, and it now appears in the groups in the project browser. As I said before, groups are fine, but only if they're managed correctly especially on large projects where you're trying to get work out really quickly. Group naming isn't always on your highest priority. And I have seen 700 detail groups in a project browser, all starting with the name group. It's a nightmare. But if you do manage them correctly, and you have them named, you can reuse them again and again, and in different views. And now that I've set the base point, it operates almost like a family.